Loss of jobs and reduced incomes as a result of the coronavirus pandemic has led a majority to take debt in order to make ends meet. So how do you stay afloat financially if you've lost your job or you've taken a pay cut? Well, many people have opted for short-term loans to survive and the rate of defaulting has also increased. In Kenya alone, a report by the Central Bank of Kenya shows borrowers have defaulted up to 73 billion shillings in 2020 alone and the number is expected to go up by 17%. Now, Clearly, people are struggling to meet their loan obligations during the pandemic. So how are you coping? Have you gotten into debt amid the pandemic? And how do you get out of debt? As the COVID-19 crisis wrecks havoc on healthcare, education and the economy, it has also taken a toll on our psychological and emotional well-being. Millions of people have lost their jobs globally, and if you're worried about money right now, you're not alone. Our very own Apollo James spoke to a financial therapist and brings us the following report. There are plenty of reasons to feel worried about money right now, and a financial therapist can help. According to Gaki Biriri, a financial therapist, financial therapy can help people change the way they think and feel about money and most importantly, change negative behaviors. It gets right to the heart of your financial attitudes. Gaki says financial therapy can help those who need to dig deeper into why they can't stop living paycheck to paycheck or keep getting deeper into debt. How you, how you relate to money today is... Uh... How do you, it's a consequence of many things. Your upbringing, um, how much money you've had or not had, um, how you've seen other people relating to money. So most of the time, when you get your own money, how you're going to manage it and grow it is going to be a function of those things. So unless you start to really look back and reflect and understand why are you the way you are with your money, you won't really be able to get out of whichever current financial situation you are and growing to you know, whichever state you want to get. Different people have different needs, she says, but financial therapy can help one develop a detailed financial plan. It helps you get really clear on what your financial goals are. Many times I hear people saying, um, I want to retire by the time I'm 40, right? Which is a great goal. But then how are you going to retire at 40? right so just that clarity for you to be able to break down your goals into things that you can achieve is one is one huge um advantage good debt has the potential to increase your net worth or enhance your life in a very important way bad debt involves borrowing money to purchase rapidly depreciating assets or only for the purpose of consumption so there's there's two things to consider here there is good debt and bad debt right when you borrow you have to understand why you are borrowing if you're borrowing to put that money in something that will generate more money back then that is not a bad thing go ahead and borrow for example if you are taking a loan to buy maybe a house for rental income once you do the math because you have to do the math to make sure that you're not paying more in interest than you are getting in revenue right but then if that's the case or if you're taking a loan to pay let's say for your master's education or maybe to start a business something like that um and this is a business which you've tried a bit and tested and you've seen it has um, opportunity then go ahead and borrow the money let's say you borrow money because you've lost your income or let's say you borrow money because of a medical emergency let's say you have a family member for example who gets sick and then you need to borrow money now those are emergencies right and while it makes sense why you're borrowing money because of an emergency you still need to try and plan for that so if you can try and build an emergency fund you don't need to experience financial trauma for you to get financial therapy better yet you can get financial therapy before issues start apollo james switch tv Thank you, Apollo James. We now get expertise on digital lending as we look at how the pandemic has forced the majority of Kenyans into debt. Thank you so much for creating time. A report by the Central Bank of Kenya shows borrowers have defaulted up to 73 billion shillings in 2020 alone, and the number is expected to go up by 17%. What gives you the confidence to lend without any sort of guarantee or collateral? Digital lenders are not lending at low interest rates. They are lending at very high interest rates. They're probably the highest anywhere in the world. And therefore, 
part of the model is um, uh, a, a very large default ratio. So, you know, this, obviously the smarter digital lenders, because there's something like 400, you know, there's a spectrum. They're going to be very smart ones who are taking very clever risks and they're going to be less smart ones. But essentially it's the very high interest rate which protects them against this very high default ratio. Now, in the wake of COVID-19, what challenges have you faced and have you been able to overcome them? You know, COVID-19 uh, was a once-in-a-century phenomena. The last time we had a similar pandemic was the Spanish flu, 1918-1919. So, um, uh, you know, it, it is a very rare, extreme event that we encountered, we hope. Uh, but, you know, there's some people who think it's going to more frequently. Um, uh, I, my concern is that, you know, the economic uh, blowback from the pandemic is going to continue longer than many people are expecting. Um, and all the challenges of the weak economy in Kenya are going to play out for longer. We've got the election coming up next year. That's not going to be helpful for the economic activity. And I think the digital lenders will be thinking to themselves, look, you know, if we can survive something that happens once every hundred years and we can come out on the other side, we're going to be stronger, we're going to be better, and we're going to be able to, uh, uh, you know, a rising economic tide is going to float our boat. So I think that's the approach. But, you know, given that there are 400 digital lenders, I'm, so, I'm sure some of them, either because of a, a lack of robust systems or... Uh, a poor point scoring system are not going to survive, but the ones that do are going to come out much stronger and I think it will be difficult to catch up. Where do you get performance indicators to know how much a borrower should get, especially during this pandemic period where financial stability is a bit rocky? A really good question. So lenders typically are uh, using uh, um, digital data points. Who are your friends? How busy are you from your phone analyzing your activity from predominantly phone-based analysis? And from this, they're able to see whether you're active. They're able to see, they can, they can compute whether you're economically active and what kind of economic activity you're conducting. And they base their um, analysis on your credit worthiness in some cases on up to 200 data points. They're looking at all kinds of data they can suck in, looking at your social media, looking at all kinds of things. This is also a problem, of course, because the amount of information they have about you is also a dagger that can be turned against you. But essentially, they are looking um, predominantly via the phone. They've got these big crunching mechanisms which suck out all the information from your phone, analyze it, and then spit out as credit scoring uh, a mechanism. Now, loan shaming is a major problem. How are you planning on challenging this? Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I've seen horrific stories of people being contacted, uh, close family, friends. Um, uh, I'm sure there have been a number of suicides because, you know, we are we are a community based uh, people. You know, we live within our communities and the shaming is is terrible. So. It's a very difficult issue, um, and I think uh, you know the digital lenders have got to be regulated in this regard. It's just not appropriate that they can do these kinds of things. And I think that's where I would definitely agree with the central bank. That the central bank needs to regulate that type of behavior. Is there a better way of dealing with potential loan defaulters? You know, the I think um, the lenders will say, "Look, we're taking." Uh, we're lending on the base of zero collateral, we have no security, and therefore, you know, uh, we're only trying to protect um, ourselves and our shareholders because they're the ones to whom we've got to go back at the end of the day. Um, uh, I think, and they'll probably say, if we don't do this, it means we're going to have more loan defaults and the cost of money will be higher and the consumer will pay for it in the end. 
But overall, I do think from a societal point of view, this is not appropriate, it's not acceptable, and we've got to work uh, on the basis of finding a better solution. What's the future of digital lending apps? The digital lending phenomena is global. It's a global phenomena. It's growing. Um, uh, you know, Kenya, interestingly, has been quite a laboratory for a lot of these guys. You know, they've come here, tested their products, and then many of them have gone global. We're seeing this trend. I'm seeing this trend continuing. Uh, you know, I think we're watching the end of the branch, the end of the relationship banker, you know, the guy you sit in front and tell him your story and then he decides whether he's going to make you a loan or not. No one has got time for that. If you look at things like China, places like China, you can see that the future is entirely digital and literally everything will be done digitally. So I think, you know, digital lenders are, are at the cutting edge of, the new world in banking. And that's why the banks themselves are going to have to reinvent themselves as digital lenders. Otherwise, they're not going to be relevant either. Thank you so much for joining us. We now take a short commercial break. But on the other side, we tell you how to get out of debt. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Frontline. Now, before we get some financial advice to help you navigate through the pandemic, let's hear Kenyans' take on borrowing. No Fliza Marakada, do easy stuff in your colleagues and say you not do Unapata as in Ukotuchin, Ukotuchin is in a popular. Come up, this is a matala, Zinaka, Sina Colea, Sazile, Umefika Mali, Love Semauna Kitu. At that time, Unatumia Sasa. According to Francis Njoroge, who is a public policy analyst, digital lending is on the rise due to lack of credit, not being available in banks and circles, and most people are investing in small businesses through short-term borrowing. What has happened in this country for the last three, four years since the 2017 election is we have seen the slowdown in terms of credit by banks. So what has happened is banks and other financial, uh, microfinancial institutions have invested a lot of money in the short term monthly loans. And if you look at um, the package being offered by Safaricom through the Fuliza, it's actually an ideal for most uh, small businesses and also personal loans. Francis, however, insists that the government should come up with ways to enable long-term business and personal loans from lenders to individuals. If people are to borrow for short-term users, then it should be very, it should be used very sparingly. It means that uh, when you want, uh, unless unless you have an emergency, that's when you. Statistics show that majority of Kenyans prefer digital loans due to their convenience and easy access compared to acquisition of loans from other credit service providers such as banks and SACOs. Since the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, an estimate of 1.2 billion shillings is being borrowed from Fuliza. The big question being, why are Kenyans opting for Fuliza? <laughs> Safaricom's overdraft facility Fuliza was ranked as the most subscribed and most used over the last three months, followed by Mshwari, most users being from self-employment and those employed from informal sectors. Sazamunga, Switch TV. We are now joined by Gashui Karaoke, a commercial lawyer. She will be giving us her expertise on Mata's finances. Many thanks for creating time, Gashui. It is without a doubt that the economic hardships caused by the COVID-19 pandemic have pushed many Kenyans to borrow from mobile lending apps. These mobile lending apps have high interest rates. Some of the top players in the digital lending space offer annualized interest rates as high as 152.4%. Karaoke, are these interest rates morally and legally right? If you're going to lend money 
and at whatever interest rates, the cap must be dictated by the Central Bank of Kenya. I think for the most part, there's, uh, there's cutthroat competition in that industry, the online lending industry as it is. So it, it, it could be a bit problematic, but if they are ethical in how they handle their business, in how they run their companies, in how they operate uh, this financial lending industry, perhaps, maybe, maybe they can self-regulate. But until then, we have seen, we've only gotten to see the worst side of what online lenders have to offer. Karaoke, there is a bill in Parliament that seeks to regulate mobile loan rates and treatment of defaulted credit protect borrowers from predatory lending, objective being to prohibit any persons, institution or firm from lending money to Kenyans unless licensed by CBK. Do you support this? What's your take? I am glad that we have gotten to a point where the state sees a need to intervene and regulate uh, online lenders because they'd become a god unto themselves. Uh, the CBK at the end of the day is the ultimate financial regulator. And what the CBK says must go in so far as financial uh, lenders go, whether they are banks, microfinance institutions, these online lenders that keep popping up here and there every now and then. It is important that they are equally uh, regulated by the Central Bank of Kenya to ensure that Kenyans are protected at all times from these rogue and unnecessary interest rates. Karaoke, mobile lending apps that publicly shame you when you're late on loan payment by texting or calling your contact list, is this a breach of privacy? That is a breach of privacy because um, at the point of taking out um, a loan, you end up exchanging information with this lender. Yeah. So when somebody decides to use your public inform your personal information and put it publicly in the name of shaming, uh, naming and shaming you, they are first of all in breach of your privacy and two, dignity. It is very indignifying and unnecessary, if you ask me. It is also in contravention of Article 31 of the Constitution that makes provisions for rights uh, as regards privacy, and it's also in contravention of Section 25 of the Data Protection Act that controls or regulates how a data controller and a data processor uses personal information of its data subjects, herein the borrowers or the customers. Then how can people protect themselves? First of all, I think it's important for Kenyans to understand that in as much as the state makes regulations for the enjoyment of privacy rights, it is also a burden upon us. It is an obligation upon us individuals to ensure that we at all times are in control of our privacy. So when you're signing up some of these things, ensure that you understand that uh, your privacy rights are not in breach. They're not asking for too much information or information you consider unnecessary. Uh, so for instance, when a lender, this online lender asks for uh, permission to access your contact list, you can refuse to give out uh, your contact list or, or consent to any form of, uh, how do I put it, interventions in terms of your private information and uh, interventions in how they use data on your devices. Can these people get out of debt and how? The government has to cushion um, the burden, the economic burden of all Kenyans, bottom line, at the end of the day, because the government is a regulator of uh, the economic space, of the industries, the government is the one that oversees labor laws, labor reforms, and um, the financial sector as it is in conjunction with uh, or working together with the labor space in Kenya. So if the government is not able to, first of all, reduce taxes to ensure that there's money in circulation at all times and that money equitably reaches everyone from the richest person in Kenya to Mamamboga at the very bottom of the economic food chain, then we will always be in a cycle. It is upon the government to cushion um, the economic problems of Kenyans. Thank you so much for creating time, Gashui Karaoke. Gashui is a commercial lawyer. Now, we come to the end of the show. Many thanks for watching. My name is Lincoln Umbogo. Till next week, same time, stay safe and don't get into bad debt.